What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's team selection time ahead of game week two. So we're going to look at how I did in game week one. Spoiler alert, like a lot of people, I did okay. So I'm quite happy with the start. And then we're going to look ahead to game week two. Any transfers, any captaincy, and how the team is just looking in general. Please do continue supporting the channel as you have been for a while. Now hit that like button if you enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button if you are new around here or if you just haven't done it yet. Let's jump into it. Game week one was ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous you can have a really good season you could probably finish top 1k and not hit 100 points in a game week at any point now, obviously double game weeks are a bit different i'm talking about single game weeks but you could have a great season and not hit 100 points so to do it in game week one when five of your players blank it just shows what a crazy week it was and obviously a lot of that was made up of salah or fernandez captains and then obviously owning the other one as well so a lot of people over captain salah had fernandez or captain fernandez had salah which is what i had uh, and they scored 54 points between them like it was crazy if you're new to fbl i hate to break it to you i don't want to put a down on the things but the next few weeks are probably not going to be quite as good as this but then again they don't need to be you could get a bigger green arrow with a lower score because it's all relevant right if if other people all get low scores and you get a slightly higher one 70 80 points happy days so let's not worry about that too much my game week rank is obviously the same as my overall rank right now so i'm 377,644 in the world if you could have offered me that before game week one i'd absolutely absolutely take it if you could get that game week rank for the whole season you'd probably win fpl i'm not talking about overall rank obviously i'm talking about game week rank so that's a really really solid start the one thing i'm a little bit frustrated about is starting with Gundogan and Mares instead of Rafinha and Son. I would have been, um, what, eight points better off. So I would have been on 108 points. And look, I'm not complaining about 100. But that, that decision went like right to the wire. I was really, it wasn't, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that you bottled it, as always happens whenever I make a transfer. But that that Mares call was one that I considered a long time. In hindsight now, I'm, I don't mind that I went for Mares, but I probably should have just started with Rafinha to not have that extra transfer to make. Um, obviously, a bit of that's hindsight now because Gundogan's potentially injured, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But yeah, frustrating they didn't get anything. But obviously, I bought them for the Norwich match, not for the Spurs match. And you can foresee injuries. That just happens. It's unlucky. Um, elsewhere, Ben Rama, Antonio, brilliant. 25 points combined between them. Love that. Uh, I wasn't massively worried about Ben Rama, but I didn't think his first half was as good as everyone else made out. His second half made up for it. And as long as Lingard doesn't sign, he's looking good. Liverpool double clean sheet. But yeah, like I said, five blanks. Sanchez, Shaw, Tony, and the two-man City players, but still got 100 points. Absolutely crazy week. Bit frustrated about Veltman, even though I didn't need him in the end. But to get a... He's not really injured, but obviously because of COVID and stuff, he missed out. To, to not find that out before the deadline was a little bit frustrating because I could have just gone Webster or Ben White instead just to have an extra body on the bench. Um, but hopefully he'll be back soon and back into the team. So massive start. I'm hoping we get another 100 point in next week. Let's see how we're going to do it. Okay, so game week two, only one free transfer, of course. Uh, no money in the bank. My squad value is 100.3. I'm just trying to think about who's gone up in price in my team already. Obviously, Simicast has, and there must be a Oh, Bruno Fernandes has as well. Obviously, you all know I've got him, and I think Antonio has as well. So a few players have gone up in price. Obviously, you don't get to sell them for more yet. So if you're new to FPL, they've got to go up 0.2 million before you get an extra 0.1 to spend, right? So if Simicast goes up to 4.2 million, I'll then be able to sell him for 4.1. But right now, I can still sell him for four. Um, defense is looking pretty good. Obviously, Sanchez's first game, not great to not get a clean sheet, but we know how good Brighton's fixtures are. I'm hoping for, what, out of the first six weeks, if he could get four clean sheets, that would be massive. But I think I'd be happy with three. So that's still on. Obviously, Watford's going to be a difficult game. Uh, I think Saar and Co. played pretty well in the first game against Villa. But I would trust Brighton defense a little bit more than Aston Villa although they do have some injuries so maybe it'll be a bit of an easier game um, for Watford in that one but I'm, I'm hopeful with Sanchez I think Burnley actually played pretty well at times in that game in game week one but also the goal is like he blatantly just pushed him over so that was a bit crazy but I do think Sanchez kind of flapped a bit um, at some crosses so maybe a slight concern but the fixtures are good right Simicast and Trent like Trent's in the team for like six seven game weeks without injury so nothing to worry about there Simicast look there's all that I, I posted the image about Simicast's days being numbered right I was only messing around obviously we know his days are numbered anyway Robertson when he's back is going to be straight back in the team uh, but a lot of people kind of replied saying yeah he's running but that doesn't mean he's going to be back straight away i fully get that right i'm not saying robertson's going to be back for burnley um but we know that simicast is only a very short term option so i have got a bench availing 
and Veltman. So if Robertson was back this week, I'd be okay playing Veltman. The problem is, obviously, he's not necessarily going to play. So I'd have to play Aiden, but it's probably not a problem this week. But longer term, I'll have to think about that. Do I have enough bench cover for Simicast or do I want to make a move? There's so many £4 million defenders that have played in game week one that surely a couple of them, maybe one or two, are going to play full-time. So I'm keeping my eye on that. It could just be a straight swap there. I'm not worried about it right now. I don't want to buy Diogo Jota necessarily right this minute. So it's not really a massive concern for me. Um, Parika as well on the bench, just not bothered about it. He can just rot there for a little while. And, and one day, maybe when I wild card, I'll sell him. Uh, and Luke Shaw... I thought he looked good against these. I thought he was quite attacking. Obviously, Man United didn't keep the clean sheet, but they defended really well. Leeds didn't have many chances, and the goal they did get was a bit of a wonder strike from Ailing, right, who, who was on my bench uh, with a six-pointer. But apart from that, they didn't really trouble Man United. So I'm confident the clean sheet's going forward, especially against Southampton. I think um, Adam Armstrong might cause us some problems with his pace, but ultimately Man United defended well, and Luke Shaw was very attacking, as I think he will be against Southampton, because he lets Pogba come inside. I don't know whether Pogba's going to start on the left again, but either way, I'm very happy with Luke Shaw. I do think he's underpriced. He probably should have been six million, uh, like Chilwell. But the defense is looking pretty good this week. Okay, so midfield is is kind of where the problems start a tiny bit, at least with Gundogan. We'll come on to him at the end. Um, with Fernandez and Salah, we probably don't need to talk about them too much. Obviously, I'm keeping both of them. Fernandez has got a really nice run of fixtures. If I want to keep him, I could keep him all the way up to game week seven. And this is why I liked him so much. You know, he's going to play 90 minutes. I think that's so huge. He's capable of these big scores. Okay, a hat trick is probably not something we're going to see too often but also he's got great fixtures but he is a player that i could swap to like a lukaku if i wanted to so i could switch from a 3-5-2 to a 3-4-3 instead uh, and just put brownhill in in midfield and go for lukaku up front suddenly i'm in a 3-4-3 yes i've lost bruno but that's a decision i have to make at some point that's going to happen with big hitters throughout this season and I've got 0.5 million more to spend. Maybe a little bit more by the time uh, Bruno Fernandes keeps going up in price. My captain is on Salah, though. I spoke a lot about this pre-season, that I like to select my captains in advance, and I don't let what happens in games dictate my thoughts too much. So if... I, I, I can't really give you proper numbers, right? Because I'd just be guessing. But I would say Fernandes's captaincy this week will be much, much, much higher than it would have been if he'd only got an assist in the first game or just one goal in the first game. But obviously, Southampton played so poorly against Everton and Fernandes did so well against Leeds. A lot more people are captaining him. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I like having my captains in advance because one game anything can happen it doesn't mean it's going to be repeated game after game so i think fernandez is a great captain option this week i really do um possibly second or third behind maybe the Bruyne if he was fit and going to play against norwich but probably second but i just think salah's the one for you let's not forget salah played really well as well yes he only got 17 points but there's only three behind fernandez they're both on penalty so they don't even have that to cancel them out um and salah i just think is more likely to get you a goal in any given game plus he's at home at anfield so he's definitely my captain that 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 is not going to change the other three i've already got ben rama so i'm not worried too much about jesse lingo because if he comes in then i'll just sell ben rama if i didn't have him i'd maybe a little bit wary about bringing him in that's my only concern with him i think he played well enough that david moyes will be off his back for a little while i, I just i still don't know if david moyes is completely confident in him but if they sign Lingard, then Ben Rahm becomes a problem. But there's no point in worrying about that till the transfer goes through. I'm also not too concerned about Mares. I know he didn't play great against Spurs. I would say after the first 15 minutes, Man City didn't in general. Let's not forget that Mares did have a brilliant chance in that game. I think it was in the first half. Like in the six-yard box pretty much, or, or maybe a little bit closer to the penalty spot. Another day he buries that, and another day Son doesn't score from outside the box, or, or near enough anyway. Uh, and I'm not ruining that decision. So if I made a transfer on Sunday, I might have just reversed that. But I've, I've slept on it a few nights now. And obviously, I'm thinking about it a bit more clearly. I don't necessarily need to move Mahrez on. If Son looks like he's going up in price, maybe I'll take the hit. But I think that's a mistake when Mahrez is about to play Norwich, right? After that, who knows? Maybe his minutes will be managed. Maybe he'll start getting more sub appearances. He was never a long-term pick anyway. The rest of my squad, I said this when I did the videos was so solid, apart from maybe Ben Rama, that I could afford to be a little bit aggressive. Yes, it hasn't worked out in game week one. I could have been eight points better off, but this Norwich game could turn things around, right? Everything that happened in game week one is not necessarily going to happen again in game week two. With Gundogan, um, if Veltman was available, which we might find out in the Brighton press conference, you could make a case that I play Veltman 
and just bench Gundogan because it's a good chance of a clean sheet for Brighton. Uh, if he plays right wing back, he could be quite attacking as well. And you bench Gundogan and with two free transfers, you make the move in game week three instead. The thing is, if I make a move in game week three, it's almost certainly going to be for Son, I think. I think, not 100% on that. And I don't like benching attackers for defenders usually it's just not how i like to play right so i think rather than take the hit on gundogan as in take the hit on a price drop because i do think he's going to drop to 7.4 before the end of the week i probably will transfer him out now right now i'm going to be honest i don't know who for because every player i think about they've got like a problem in my head attached to them okay so rafinha could be one but it leaves me tight on money to get son potentially unless i move early uh, and also there's all this stuff about the international break and players going to south america playing for brazil salah with egypt etc alison fabino obviously all with brazil as well that they might be back so late they won't be able to play in game week four and then potentially because of isolation they may miss game week five now i'm not looking to scaremonger anyone that is not confirmed some of them might play game week four and five right but it's in the back of my mind as something to think about otherwise i could go to greenwood but then that leaves me short for son if if and when i want him to be honest if, if i knew Myers was going to play 80 to 90 minutes for the next four to five weeks like up until game week five when they play southampton i think i could make a case just to keep him right if salah was going to miss game week four well game week three they've got chelsea game week four if he's going to miss that could potentially sell him right to son if i wanted a different captain so that's that's on my mind as well but realistically i'm not going to sell salah but i have thought about it already right uh, and i would get him straight back before anyone says what about his fixtures i'd want him straight back that's probably why i wouldn't do it so greenwood for gundogan if if you've got that kind of money uh, and you're not worried about future transfers. I do think he's probably the standout. I think, is he nailed long-term? No. But right now, you don't need to worry about that. For the next three to four fixtures, they're decent. And I think he gets good minutes. Elsewhere, if I'm not going for Rafinha, then there's probably Saar, Harrison, both at 6 million, or Mbuimo. Mbuimo? I, mean, I need to get the pronunciation right. For Brentford, I just don't know. Do I want two Brentford attackers? But then they've got Crystal Palace and Villa next two games and we saw how attacking they were against arsenal so i kind of like the look of him plus he's 5.5 million in brimo if i get him that's a lot of extra money to spend elsewhere so i'm going to keep my eye on the international news what what's going to happen with rafinha essentially uh, if it looks like he might be available for, even if he misses game week four it's not the end of the world but i don't want him to miss any more than that it's just how much do I want him for kind of Burnley and Everton and then possibly losing him, right? Sorry, Everton, then Burnley, and then losing for game week four. But it is Liverpool anyway. So it's not the end of the world. So as always with these videos, some weeks I'll be like, yes, I'm definitely getting that player in. Or yes, I've already done it. Or it's going to 100% be this player. Sometimes I'm just not too sure. And right now, that's this is where I'm at with Gundogan. I think if I wasn't worried about Son, I would just buy Greenwood, to be completely honest with you. But I am worried about Son. So Saar, Harrison, uh, and Embrimo. Uh, and Rafinha are the four that I'm looking at I just just with all of them there's a slight problem Rafinha is international Harrison I'm just not sure about his minutes versus and realistically I want Rafinha not Harrison if I'm only having one Sars next two fixtures Brighton and Spurs are not as good as his first fixture all the fixtures from game week four onwards but he is a 90 minute man uh, and do I want double Brighton so that's where my head's at right now but almost certainly I will sell Gundogan this week I'm just not quite sure who for yet. So there's one rule to stick to in FPL. Forget about all the rubbish about not captaining in the early kickoff. Forget not worrying about players with limited minutes if they're going to look good like Mares, Jota, etc. Right? You can still buy them if you want. The one rule to stick to is if West Ham have good fixtures and Antonio is fit, you buy him, right? What a legend. Absolute legend. 13 points in the first game. He's got Leicester. He's got two good fixtures after that. I do, again, have slight concerns about West Ham playing in Europa League. They haven't signed a striker yet. How will Antonio's minutes be managed? There's no way, I don't think, he can play weekend Premier League and then midweek Europa League, then back to the Premier League. I just don't think... I, I just don't think he would last long doing that. Let's see what the plan is from West Ham. But again, we're, we're, I'm already thinking like four or five game weeks time. I don't need to worry about that right now. He's obviously in there and he's staying. Leicester's probably the hardest fixture of the first four, but he can do anything. I don't, apart from maybe take a penalty, right? Because he wasn't great at the penalty. I'd say he's probably going to be off them straight away. Interestingly, I think someone said Ben Rama's scored six out of six penalties. So he might get the next one if he's on the pitch. Uh, and Tony, I've, I've got... 
the only concern I have about Tony is the role he played against Arsenal was more to bring other players into play to the point where he didn't have a single shot. Now, obviously, it's a one-game sample, so I'm not too worried. I picked him for like the first four or five weeks because he was cheap, because he's on penalties, because he's nailed. But I would like to ha see him have like one shot, right? At least let's get the ball rolling with the shots and get at least one and then move forward. But Crystal Palace is a great fixture. Then it's Villa, like I said, when I was talking about the midfielders as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Overall, the team is good, right? If I think back to game one, I've seen some good questions on Twitter. I think Adam Hockcroft posted one to someone else about how if you had a wild card right now, or if you could go back and change your game with one side, what would you do? And obviously, you know, bringing in all the players that scored Greenwood, etc. But for me, it would probably just be going to have that Son pick with Rafinha, without Rafinha, but just getting Son in there for Mares. And obviously, that some of that's hindsight, right? Because Mares didn't score that great chance, and Son did score his. But also, I just think the next three fixtures are good. And I said it so many times, with or without Kane, he's great. He's brilliant through the middle. He's a great striker. I actually think if Kane leaves, I don't think they necessarily need to buy a number one choice striker. I think Son can play that. Maybe think about buying some better wingers or whatever it might be instead. I just think Son is that good. He can play anywhere across the front three. So I kind of, that's probably what my one regret that I thought about him loads. But look. Maris is a great option. He could have scored in the first game. Norwich is a brilliant fixture. Let's see how I feel in game week three. But ultimately, I think the team is looking solid. There's a load of good, solid picks that are going to play week in, week out without um, injuries. And then you've probably got Ben Rama, Maris, and Gundogan, who are a little bit more aggressive. Um, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Not, not, I wouldn't say not solid picks, but you know what I mean, right? There's a few risks involved with them, but we can clear that up over the next few weeks. So Gundogan probably going to be sold and possibly with an eye to get Son in. Although I must admit, I'm very tempted by Greenwood because I think for the next three fixtures, he's absolute gold. So there we go. That is it for that one. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like. Hit that subscribe button. We're only like 40k away from 250k. Ridiculous. 10k subs since like this time last week. Mental. Thank you for your support. Thank you for keeping on watching uh, these streams. What I would say to most people with your teams this week, right? If you properly plan, you properly look at fixtures. Unless you've got an injury like me with Gundogan. Obviously, I've got Veltman possibly injured as well like two things i just couldn't predict you shouldn't be panicking about your teams unless obviously you had a plan to be really aggressive game week one like i don't know jotter against norwich with the view that you were always going to move him on then fair enough but most of you do not need to be making transfers this week trust me there's going to be plenty to make throughout the season right but leave me a comment below let me know what you think of this team if you haven't already checked out patreon as well patreon.com slash let's talk fpl uh, there's a link in the description all the kind of perks and benefits for helping support a little bit further are all listed down there if you want to go and check it out big thank you to daz m ahmed z uh, or z uh z or z i'm from england it should probably be z right uh, and then ross h thank you very much for uh signing up since the last video and if you want to get up on the new recruits board and all that good stuff links in the description below i'll leave it there i'll be back tomorrow with another video i'm going to do the game week preview on thursday at least for this week maybe not for next week let's see how it plays out uh, but yeah game week preview tomorrow so i'll be putting up a tweet later today asking for questions for that uh, and then captaincy on friday deadline stream on saturday so loads to come hit that subscribe button hit that like button really is appreciated and i'll catch you again soon mm -hmm.